Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me here at Soulprint Intuitive Tarot. For those of you who are maybe newer uh, subscribers or viewers, you may not be familiar with my guy, my guy here, Marcus. Um, he's been on before and he he's he he lives in Georgia and he has kind of his fingers on the pulse of a lot of the stuff that's going on, um, particularly in his county. But, the, you know, he also has sort of an overview. So he doesn't, it's, we're not going to talk about like politics per se, kind of maybe more some of the politicians. And one of the reasons that I asked him to kind of come back and give us a bit of an update is because it just sort of feels like some of the kind of mega Republicans are, are kind of pushing some of the more traditional ones who at least have some brains out of the way. And it's a concern considering, you know, it was Georgia that, you know, got the, um, the senators into the Senate to give the Dems the majority. And so there's just things going on there. And I always feel like we should kind of keep track of what's going on in Georgia, because I think it gives us some indicators of what's going on maybe in some of the other states that we sort of perceive as red. So, Marcus, again, thank you very, very much for being here. Um, so I, let's, I'm just going to start with that first question. How are the sort of traditional Republicans, so the Brian Kemp's and the, the Raffensburgers, and how are they coping? Because it really does feel like there's this influx of, of mega um, politicians or, or people in government and their attitude. What's going on out there? Well, they 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 very well may be on their way out. That you know is the bottom line. Um, right now, uh, Brian Kemp has his eyes focused on what's beyond the governorship. He has two more years out of of his second term, and then he's term limited. Uh, the assumption has long been that he would run for uh, the Senate. Uh, and challenge uh, John Ossoff, but um, word out on the street and his more recent behavior implies that his sights are actually on the presidency. And he's beginning to make uh, decisions that may play well in the national Republican party, but it is pulling the rug out from under a lot of people in Georgia well, probably if it, if he if he doesn't if he doesn't do some basic things to turn this around, uh, he could make it so that he can't actually win a primary, a Republican primary in Georgia. And I think that may actually be his calculation anyway. I think I think he's already decided that a um, that a normal Republican can't win win a primary in Georgia, and uh, especially not one that has that has alienated so many people in the southeastern part of Georgia, which has historically been his base. And um, so the, the, you know, uh, the last time um, Cindy and I uh, did the show, I kind of went into a lot of detail about how um, Brian Kemp has uh, put a lot of industry in Georgia with the, uh, the port of Savannah, uh, expansion in which will make it the largest seaport on the Atlantic Ocean, and on the uh, uh, the build you know the building of the Honda Hyundai plant, and you know there are eight plants that are under construction. Actually, excuse me, it's now nine. The number has increased uh, within twenty miles of my uh, of my office, and um, and actually a, a small little plant is going to be built uh, actually just across. The way from my office uh, in a in a warehouse that's been vacated. So, so the uh, uh, the industrial growth in Southeast Georgia is off the chain. Uh, because he has changed his, he had made a bunch of promises to all these Southeast Georgia counties that that he was going to bring a lot of infrastructure money here and money for housing and uh at this past legislative session and but since he changed his focus to the national scene 
you know, accepting a bunch of money from uh, Build Back Better, you know, a bunch of infrastructure money is bad politics in at the national scene in the Republican Party. So he's oh decided goodness. he's not going to do that. And so the state of Georgia doesn't have the money to to help these counties uh, uh, catch up with the growth. And so, so to give you just a, a sample of it, the city I live in is um, is a city of about forty thousand people. Its its water treatment plant uh, is is capable of some growth, but it's out of date, and it's not adequate for what's coming. And and right now there are six thousand units of housing in the pipeline to be built in a county in a city of 40,000 people. That 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 translates to about 12,000 people being added overnight. And then and then the uh the, the folks at the plant city planning are saying that they expect to get two more thousand applications this month. The county has been taken over uh the the the, the more traditional Republicans who are up for re-election this year have all been primary to out, um, every one of them, and they are being they are being replaced by people who are um, uh, who, who are out of their minds, <laughs> <laughs> okay. who are just that's, out that's of their a good mind. description. That's a good description. Uh, and 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 the guy, I mean, the guy who just who just won to be, you know, a uh, county manager. Is is a full time medevac pilot who, who works sixty hours a week, and somehow or another he thinks he has time to to manage a rapidly growing county of eighty one thousand people. Um, I, and and the guy has never served in any political office. I sat down with him for three hours and say, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Have you thought about this? Have you thought about the political consequences of uh, pushing uh, all this growth into the city of Statesboro so that instead of having, having your suburbs grow with people, uh, well, you know, relatively wealthy people who own property and who will probably vote Republican, you're going to fill city, you're going to make city of Statesboro you know, three times bigger than the county, and it's going to be filled with uh, apartment dwellers from up north that are going to vote Democrat, and it's not going to be the kind of Democrats you're used to. It's going to be progressive de Democrats from New York City. You realize you will be voted out in eight years by people who share none of your values because of what you're threatening to do. And... Um, so anyway, and and that was the first that, that was a revel, that was a revelation to him. So, so maybe that will change his approach because because he's like, oh gee, I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> so, so that's a, that's a little little. So so are the so okay. So he's not going to take any money from Build Back Better, and. The, the water system is like hitting max, and there's all this new growth. What happens to the infrastructure? How does that get put into place and created? Because there, you've got all of these um, warehouses and, and plants being built, going to attract people. They got to fill them with employees. Well, the, is, the, is there a plan? The the uh, uh, the the the, the Zach quote from our city planner. The politicians have put a put us in a situation that is completely unworkable. <laughs> wow. Okay. The people are coming. They can't stop them from coming. And there's no infrastructure for them. And because the governor didn't put any money for the infrastructure, there's no way. There's no way the city of Statesboro, for the city of Statesboro to build, to build what they need to build in order to be ready for these people without state and federal uh, money to help. They would have to charge their water customers thirty dollars a gallon to do it. That, that, that just is not going to happen. They will they will they will pump raw sewage into the Ogeechee River before they do that. 
Okay, so really not big on environment issues either, obviously. <laughs> Well, you know, the, Governor Kemp did run on, you know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna relax all the 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 environmental regulations so that Georgia can be the uh, be the uh, best place in this country to do business. So maybe maybe that's maybe that's what he's saying. You know, by not putting any money there, that that's what will happen, and just by default, because th 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 what else yeah. can it do? Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! <laughs> so as we're Kind of, you know, moving towards um, this this federal election coming. What's your sense of of what's likely to happen in Georgia? Like, does it at this point does it really feel sort of like the, the crazy Republicans and Megas are just going to do like a sweep? Because it does seem like in in other certain you know primary elections and that kind of thing that the Megas aren't doing well. They're getting you know they're not getting. Um, the votes to, to go forward, but is that happening in Georgia, or or is it the flip where really the MAGAs are have now like got a, a good stronghold? The MAGAs have got a stronghold. They're 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 winning. They're winning, especially in the well. I don't know about other parts of Georgia, but they they're pretty much uh, sweeping the map in East Georgia. Um, now, what I will say about that is. Is they have uh, they have put the because of that uh, they have created a situ situation on the Bullitt County Board of Commissioners, which was you know uh, which was you know for traditional conservatives uh, Republicans yeah. and two very conservative Democrats. And uh, they have created a situation where uh, where the Republicans have a chance of gaining a seat. I'm sorry, the Democrats have a chance of gaining the seat. And the new guy who's running, who is the county chair of the Democratic Party, is still kind of on conservative side if you count if you compare him to Democrats in other parts of the country. But he's more progressive than the two African American conservatives that are on there. Uh, for one thing, he's gay and they're pretty anti-gay <laughs> so <laughs> so there's that <laughs> could be a bit of a problem yeah that yeah. will be new for bullet county so uh so not the warmest welcome i bet <laughs> so the the uh, uh so i mean if he wins that election and he, and he could uh what i saw happen at the uh uh bullet county chamber of commerce is you know, the, the, they are terrified. I mean, the, the all the business leaders are just absolutely, are just absolutely, they're not happy with anybody. Uh, they're not happy with the governor. Uh, they're not happy with these new people that got elected. They're not happy with the, you know, with the county commissioners that just got unelected because they didn't do some basic things they needed to do in order to not create the sex situation everybody's in they're just unhappy and uh, and they were you know and they were and they supported the there was a there was a runoff for one of the republicans that was a county commissioner and they and they kind of kept quiet and quietly supported him until he lost his runoff bid and and now they you know so at the last chamber of commerce they were all standing around uh the the democrat uh, for for the seat, saying you're our guy, you know we're we, you know don't worry, we 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 got this, we're going to we're going to support you all the way, you know rah rah rah, and and I tell you, I I've had I've had some conversations with with some um with some local Republican business people around Statesboro, and they're pretty much done. They're and it's, and they're not just done. I mean, they're still giving lip, just kind of a little bit lip service to the National Republican Party, but they are, you know, to quote uh, the the president of one of our largest uh, developer uh, construction company in the town. You know, she said, "I'm tired of the ugliness. I'm tired of the chaos. Uh, I am tired of 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 this." you know, this game of chicken every year with the budget and, and things that affect my livelihood and that threaten to shut everything down. Um, 
So I'm, I, I want more po politicians that are like our mayor, who, yes, he may be more liberal on a lot of social issues that I'm comfortable with, but doggone it, he keeps things running. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So just just sort of I want your take on this. If if for some reason um Trump ceases to be a player in the Republican Party, okay? So he's no longer kind of that that shadowy leader of the Republican Party who's telling them what to do. What's your sense of sort of the mega Republicans? Are they going to be set adrift or has Trump just sort of given them permission to be their own worst selves and they're going to carry on in that vein? Like, I guess I'm trying to figure out is how independent or separate their thoughts are and their processes are from Trump or or not. I mean, that, that's a really good question. I mean, um you know, a lot depends on who he chooses as his running mate, because if 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 because if Trump drops out for whatever reason the running mate is going to end up being the their i mean what will most likely happen is that uh is that you know trump's name will remain at the top of the ticket and uh and then you know if he god forbid you know that ticket were to win um then what would happen is that the that, you know they will sworn in the vice president and then he, and then that vice president will immediately fulfill their constitutional role by being sworn in as president I mean that's most likely what will happen uh and 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 I say that because because Georgia had something very similar to this happen back in the 40s and that was the and that was uh the process which the Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court laid out for the states in response to the question that came before them. So, so I I, I can't imagine why they would break that precedent because that's as good or that's as rational a way to do it as any that I can think of. Yeah. Um. So and and they aren't going to be able to nominate someone new because the states won't have time to change the ballots, and you'll end up with a situation where the Republicans have one candidate. Uh, you know their new candidate on some states and and their old candidate on the other states and then and then numerically they can't get 270 they need to run the race so they aren't going to do that they are i don't think they're that stupid um so they'll just they'll just keep it the way it is and then try to convince their people that well you know the vice president nominee is really the one that's going to become president but you know vote trump uh i think <laughs> It's a curiosity to me. Republicans will do. Yeah. yeah, it's a curiosity, curiosity to me because it seems like um people who have been running to be, you know, Trump clones across the board, they're not getting elected. So it seems almost that Trump holds kind of the magic. And if you're not him then people aren't interested as much as sort of following the new person because that's what's happening in, um, you know, primary ele elections and that kind of thing where the real mega candidate is not winning. And so, you know, where does, where does that lead? I mean, it's it just a recipe for absolute chaos and one end not knowing what the other end's doing. Yeah, I, th I, th I, th I think I think they will create a situation where, I mean, if Trump, if something happens to Trump, I mean, I think two things are going to happen is that the, uh, uh, you know, there'll be some people who, who just aren't going to vote or, you know, th th that will, th they, yeah. they, they just won't go to the polls. They'll be mad at everybody, uh, you know, um, there was a time um, back when Georgia Georgia was uh, democratic. You had what was known as yellow dog Democrats, which is you know they would vote for a yellow dog before they vote for a Republican. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so mm -hmm. um, and that's where the term yellow dog Democrat came from, and the and the and you know 
blue dog Democrat is a conservative Democrat because they're they, you know, they're voting Democrat because of the history of the Democratic Party, even though they're really Republican. You know, anyway, the uh, anyway the uh, I, I mean I think I mean if Trump draw, if something happens to Trump, um, I mean if he were to pick a moderate you know a moderate uh, 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 vice president by vice president. It's possible he could win back the business community, I suppose, but uh, but but if he does pick a moderate vice president, and then that is the nominee, the the Democrats, the, the Democrats. I mean, not sorry, not the Democrats. The the MAGA people might assassinate that person. I mean, I don't. It's just no telling what might happen. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, as I said, these people are these people. It, it is just craziness what what we see on the ground here and and there's no um but i th i honestly think that the i know that the that um that you know our republican representative is saying that georgia the Georgia is probably because of decisions that's being made by Republicans and all these new people that are coming in, that he thinks he thinks East Georgia is going to flip the state blue in two to four years. I mean, not the state, but the the House of Representatives. It will take longer with the governorship and with the with the Senate, but uh, but he's saying you know and 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 we'll take it and we'll take the entire state within ten years. Uh, because of what's happening in East Georgia, especially if you bring in all these Northerners and there's no infrastructure and it's a and it's a it's a gong show, and they and these Northerners come in and say these these Yahoos that are running these these counties and the state are just not <laughs> yeah. I mean, it looks so, really bad. It's going to look really bad when they get here and, and, they, and they look around and see how things are going. So there's a lot of talk just in the last few days about um, how, you know, the Fortune 500 companies are not supporting Trump. Right? You know, there were the executives who were in that meeting and they came out saying he, he can't finish a sentence. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The well, really, really, really wealthy people are supporting Trump because they like, you know, I don't know, maybe the fact that he's just going to be a puppet or he's going to cancel all their taxes or whatever it is. So when you get like the, the business people, the people who are running those businesses, the CEOs, and they're like done with the crazy. And that seems to be the trend. Um, that feels like it, it, there's a way for Democrats to kind of move in there and wow. and get, you know, get some ground because the, you know, the last thing any business anywhere wants is chaos, right? The stock exchange goes nuts when there's chaos. Everybody wants things to level out and be smooth. And I just can't imagine that happening if by some horrible cosmic accident, um, Trump actually makes it to the election and wins. It's not going to happen. Don't don't freak out everybody. But the point the point is, if something like wonky happens, I can't see how it's going to come together because I think that the business people are just going to push back against him because they can't take any more chaos. Well, I mean, I, I, as I said, I, I, the, the local, the local, um, the local business people here in Bullock County are are just done, and uh, and you know, and 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 you know, as I said, they were already mad at the at the old county commissioners, and now they got these new people, and they're just and you know, and and they're okay, you know, and now they're saying to the to the Democrats, well, how much money do you need? <laughs> we, we... Yeah. And, and, and so I... Marcus, hold on, Marcus, hold on, because your sound has just vanished. I can just hear you a very little bit. Can you hear me now? Can 
Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. But because you faded out on the really good part about Democrats are saying how much money, or people are saying to the Democrats, how much money do you need? And then it, it died. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. And I, I kind of got too far away from the microphones. What happened? I think, uh, I I really think the, the Republicans are playing with dynamite. Now, here's, here's the thing. Uh, Democrats are going to have to make some tough choices, too. And uh, because, you know, the Democrat, you know, <clears throat> you know, the Democratic Party is a very diverse party. And um, if you're if if you get a bunch of business Republicans flooding in the party, that's that's going to make things more conservative uh, in the party wide. And and, you know, and so the question comes, can the Democrats hold it together? Um I, we may be in a situation kind of similar to what happened uh, 200 years ago when the Federalist Party uh, you know, collectively went nuts. <laughs> where, where, where a, you know, where a Federalist uh, vice president uh, has a duel with uh, a Federalist formal, former Secretary of the Treasury and kills him, and the Federalists are now all of a sudden find themselves advocating for a uh, for a uh, monarch as you know monarchical presidency and, and, an imp and an American empire, and 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 the result was was uh, was. Three consecutive two term um, Republican Democrat presidents and a one term one. And the one term one was a, was a one term because the Republican Democrats split into the Democratic Party and the, and what became the Whig Party. And, uh, and, and you ended up back with two parties because the two, because, because the sane Federalists had become part of the of the of the Repub of the Republican Democratic Party, and so uh, this is this is what will happen. I mean, if the if the Republican Party continues on this in insanity tour, and American democracy survives, and that's you know then that's the caveat. Can can the Democrats hold on power for this for multiple administrations? You know, until the Republican Party becomes weak enough that the Democratic Party is able to split and back into two a center right, center left party. Yeah. Um, can they hold it together that long, and uh, and 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 rule until until these these Republicans become so completely insane that that they can split without losing the democracy to a bunch of crazy people and you know we've done it before but, but that was 200 years ago yeah, well you know if it's happened once it can always happen again yeah. it's um it's definitely crazy crazy times going on down there so what's your sense of how the, the few Democratic people, okay, like, so you've got a Democratic senator or two there. How are they uh, kind of holding their own in Georgia? Well, like, do they still have a lot of support or are people kind of going, you know, they're not doing what I want them to do? Or well, what's that looking like? Like the Oslovs and the, like that. Well, of course, the, the, the MAGA people are, you know, are, of course, off with their heads. The business community loved Ossoff and Warnock because they're they're out trying to bring infrastructure. They're out trying to they 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 have been two of the hardest working senators uh, the state of Georgia has had in in generations that anyone can remember. And I've, I'm having lots of business leaders say. You know these these two senators are are answering their phone calls, uh, and 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 they are and they are doing stuff, 
And, um, you know, and I've had business leaders say, you know, our congressman from our district, Rick Allen, I, you know, talk to any business person just about in Bullock County, and they'll tell you that uh, talking to Rick Allen is a complete waste of time. He, the, 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 you know, uh, you know, this is not as off color as the way he said it, but our, our, uh, uh, our county manager said, you know, uh, that Rick Allen has has his head so far up uh, Donald Trump's rear end that there is no point in talking to him on any subject. <laughs> well, yeah, that's pretty clear then. That's and pretty that's clear. A Republican, and that's a Republican county manager who has that yeah. opinion about him. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, yet he still gets elected because he's he's got lots of money and the and the MAGA people like him because he has his head up in the rear end of Donald Trump. I mean, and that's why he gets reelected. But 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 the business community, especially the ones who who are uh, sophisticated enough to know the things that they actually need for their businesses to function well, they're they you know. They talk to the senators. They don't mess with Rick Allen. Well, and you know, the thing is, I imagine they're already a little testy considering, you know, Kemp promised all of this stuff and then he he pulled back and he's not delivering. And and it, it seems like that it's going to cause a problem because you already have like the factories being built. It's not like you can just stop, right? But the right. infrastructure isn't going to be there. He doesn't seem to want to be taking the money to build the infrastructure. It just seems yeah, sort of like a sad situation. It seems, from what you're saying, that, that Kemp has started to sort of bend to the will of Megas, as opposed to holding firm the way he was earlier. Yeah, well, right now, Kemp's got every everybody mad at him and 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 the and the evidence of it is that uh they floated the possibility of his wife running for governor in his place and uh the the maga people want the lieutenant governor in that spot because he's just as crazy as they are and he's a and the lieutenant governor is one of the as one of the elector you know false electors who should be on their way to on his way to jail right now uh, and and and, and yet yeah, this is the guy who the MAGAs want to have be governor, and uh, and Raffensperger has is the one that the business Republicans want to become governor, and so uh, and Kemp floated the idea of his wife running, and he got rebuffed by everybody. <laughs> so so uh, I think I think I think. You know, you know, if I if you'd asked me two years ago or even a year ago, I would say, you know, Kemp is on his, you know, Ossoff is a one-term senator, and Kemp is well on his way to replacing him. Uh, right now, I'm not so sure. I think Ossoff may be in pretty good shape to. Uh, I mean, a lot depends on on bigger national dynamics. You know, two years into a second Biden administration. Um, you know, you know that's that, that that's a that's that's a that's a you know, a, a, a midterm election and a second term president is really tough for the party in power. Yeah. So I don't know, uh, but you know I do know that the community, the business community, sees that Offsoff and Warnock are pretty good, and I tell you, uh, I. I if I think I think this crazy is wearing very thin, and I think if the Republicans don't, uh, if they don't pivot away from this constantly, we're going to try to shut down the country every time uh, there is a spending bill they don't like. Yeah. Um, I I, th I, th I think the I think they they will lose the people. I mean, just how much chaos is a tax cut worth? Yeah. I mean, because so, what does that cost you to have the to have the, the country to come to a screeching halt every year? And yeah, exactly. 
So, and, you know, I can't help but feel that on a basic level, Trump is losing support more than he is certainly losing it more than he is gaining it, because I don't see him actually gaining any momentum. I mean, it, it, his rallies are half empty. But it, what it does seem like is the people who are still with him, they are like entrenched and they're not going anywhere and they are the they are the ones who are angry and they're responding to you know his his anger and his rhetoric it feels like there's a whole bunch of other people in the country who are kind of free floating they don't like you know Biden and they don't like Trump and and they're kind of in the middle but i do not see unless you see something different on the ground i don't see Trump gaining support and just see the support getting louder. Is that what you're seeing or are you really actually seeing they're taking over areas? Uh, I think I think I think in the case of Georgia, MAGA is going to take over as far as uh, the Republican Party. But but I think the consequence of that is the Democrats are going to are go, you know the, the the process of doing that is going to accelerate uh, the process of Georgia turning blue. So instead of instead of Georgia being a purple state for twenty years, it might it might be a purple state for for one or two election cycles and then just turn blue and stay blue. Um, the, the you know of course it depends on if they, if the if the Republicans that are crazy take over and they and they make it so that no one who's not crazy can live here <laughs> and that may be how they turn it around is that they just that they, 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 they just so destroy uh what kemp and others have built that they just that it just the whole thing just becomes unlivable well then well, maybe that's an idea maybe maybe one of the states should just kind of surrender itself and be the home of the MAGAs and all the MAGAs from all over the United States and congregate there and they can be insane there and then the rest of the country can get on with the business of living. Well, that that's, you know, that that is the, I mean, uh, both, both DeSantis and Abbott, the, the Florida and Texas, that is their spoken approach is yeah. we're going to we're going to make this so insane that all the re, all the normal people leave and all the crazy people end up with Florida in Florida and Texas. Well, OK, but you can't win an election with just Florida and Texas. No, that's right. And like, you know, I am not casting aspersions, but when you see like interviews with really strong mega people, I'm sorry, they're just not that smart and they're just not making sense. And so you compile all these people in a concentrated area. I think. Well, okay. Well, so, uh, so here, here's my, and, 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 and I just, uh, and I just did a had a you know count noses kind of conversation with with the guy who's just been who's the who's the county chair elect. The, the county has the city of Statesboro has three hundred units of housing that's in the process of being developed. Three three thousand I mean sorry six thousand units of housing. That's twelve thousand people. 6,000 people voted in the in the Georgia in the in, in Bullock County in the Georgia primary. Interesting. So so the so so the so the number of people that are going to move into Statesboro in the next 2 years is three times the number than all the people who voted in Bullock County in in the primaries. You, you, you know, and those people are going to be a rental apartment dwellers who share none of the value. They're going to be from outside the South because the state of Georgia is marketing these factory jobs in places like New Jersey, uh, New York, and Chicago. And so these new people who are moving in, they're going to be apartment dwellers 
they're going to be from big cities and they they share no values in common with your rural voters who just voted you in yeah. and it's going to be 12,000 of them and 6,000 people just voting in the election that elected you. What do you think is going to happen in 2028? Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and if nothing else, they're going to be really testy about that whole water situation. That isn't getting <laughs> built. Especially they're paying $30 a gallon for water. I mean, that's not funny when your sewer starts backing up and there's no money to fix this stuff. That getting people a little cranky. Listen, thank you so much for being here. I'm probably going to beg you to come back again. It's sort of middle fall because I want to get, I just can't help but feel that if we keep our eyes on Georgia, it gives us some clarity about what's going on because it feels like Georgia has its fair share. I, I'm just going to call them like crazy mega people, but it also has a good group of like really smart business people who are primed to, to, you know, keep things floating and moving forward. And I can't help but feel that we need to keep our eye on Georgia across the board. So it's over to the line. I'm going to beg you again. I just want to Go make ahead. one last real quick point. Sure. Uh, Watch where Lincoln Project spends money. They're not spending money in Georgia right now because they think they're 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 going to spend money in uh, four uh, Rust Belt states and in and in Arizona, and they're going to spend money in Florida because they think that if they can get Florida close enough that they could they can pick off Rick Scott. But they're not going to spend money in Georgia, which means they they're but just watch where they spend money because that's because uh, that, that's because because they specifically target states where they think they can they can they can throw the state with by changing a few Republican votes. And tips like that are exactly why I keep begging Marcus to come on and talk to us. Thank you, thank you, thank you so very, very much. For everybody else, um, uh, the regular um, videos are going to be released as the week goes on. Don't forget to add your questions in the comment section. And until next time, take care and be well. Mm -hmm.